Hello, everybody. Tonight, we have a special guest in the house. We have Mr. Star Kaiju in the house. What up, brother? What up, man? So, seeing as we have our special, a special, special, special mention, let's, let's hit the intro so we can start this shit. Hello everybody, my name is Rod Gon. I'm an artist, a teacher, a mentor, a cartoonist, a little show, everything in between. And today we have a really cool little show. Uh, besides from me drawing with you guys for the night, tonight we have a special guest. We have Mr. Star Kaiju. Say hi, Mr. Star Kaiju. What's up? What's up, y'all? How y'all doing tonight? So, if you guys do not know, they... Over at Star Kaiju, let me write it out here. You guys should go follow them because we are going to start streaming through there. He's going to start teaching you guys how to take your designs and make them into products and make them like digital and clean them up and color schemes and all that stuff that you guys really need to know beyond your sketching. So... We're excited to get him to a thousand followers. What do you got to say, Jerry? Sounds like a plan, man. I've been doing it for a while, um, making different products, things of that nature. So, Rod has helped me kind of put together a nice little, like a nice little plan for you guys. So tonight we are going to also finish my sketchbook that I've been working on. So if we zoom out, beep, 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 beep. so. We are almost done with this sketchbook. And this sketchbook represents one lesson per page of the sketchbook. So every single page that we did here, we did a lesson through a stream. That means that we did over 100 lessons just with this sketchbook alone, which is awesome. And we are about to finish this with one more page so i wanted to finish this one up with little doodles from things that you guys ask but we are going to talk about a very specific topic tonight so we're going to talk about the importance or the lack of importance of keeping a sketchbook and the reason that i want to have this conversation with mr uh, jerry dunham over here uh the owner and ceo of star kaiju uh go follow him so we can get him to a thousand followers uh the reason that I want to actually bring this topic up is because he and I learned essentially the same way. We got like forced through like like having to do like two week two hundred page sketchbooks back in college. <laughs> back in college, like him and me, like so Jerry. So I'm gonna draw Jerry. And right now he has. Little curly hair. And he has an awesome goatee with white hair on it. It's called salt like, and pepper. Like, dude, like, it's he finally pepper. got, like, he got the hair that I want. Like, he has a George Clooney hair, like, on his face. And my mustache is all, like, normal. Like, but he has, like, peppery color in it. And it's, like, I'm jealous of it. So, so pepper, him and Jerry and... Mr. Rod, back back in the day, I had spiky hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I had spiky hair. Spiky hair. I had I I had hair, guys. Like I know <laughs> it, it's weird, uh, but I had spiky hair, and I had like two little bangs that fell on the front, like an NSYNC Kipraik person or something. And I didn't have a mustache. No, no facial hair. I did not have any facial hair, so it was uh, Rod and Jerry. We're essentially like, <laughs> dude. Two amigos. Yeah, we were essentially like just inseparable in college. And when we would go draw, well, we would kind of like set challenges for ourselves. And we wanted to set, we remember seeing these gigantic 200 page sketchbooks. Like they were like 200, they like they sold them at Borders, right? At Borders. No, 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 no. Not Borders. What was before Borders? Uh, um. It closed down. Ah, Jesus. You know what I'm talking about. It was an Amazon. Nah, it was red. It was red. The store was red. 
Close well, anyways, it was one of those like big bookstores that was there. And then they sold 200 page sketchbooks and we gave ourselves a challenge to do them in two weeks, which ended up being like, what, like 24 pages a day? It was 20, like, yeah, it's like 20 points. Like, so sometimes you had to do like 12. Sometimes you had to do like 22. Sometimes you had to do like 30 because you forgot over the weekend. And yeah, if you missed a day, uh, you're and we actually we were actually able to do quite a bit of um, progression while you did that because what happens during that process? Let me explain to you guys that the for the first like ten pages that you draw, you're drawing off your imagination. So your first like ten pages you draw in a day, you're like, yeah, you're fresh and you have like all this motivation to draw and you have all this imagination and you draw like all these awesome characters doing awesome things that you've had in your mind forever, right? And you spent these, you know, like five, ten pages like drawing all these awesome things. And then your mind goes blank. And then it's like and I don't know if that was the same for you. Exactly the same. So you go and you draw and you draw and you draw and you draw and then you just poof. It's like you just run out of things to draw. So what I did to cope with that, I would just start drawing things like plants. I started drawing things like foliage, uh, leaves, trees, grass, flowers, anything that was around me. So I started adding to my little mental library, like slowly by adding all these elements that I ha- would never have drawn before. I don't know. How did you approach it whenever you like ran out of shit so to do? I, I did do that, but I remember going to my dad's for the weekend and knew I had to draw. Inspiration was dry. I couldn't think of anything to draw. So I would pause the TV that I was watching. I was watching Star Trek. I would pause it, and then I would draw that frame. Hit play, and then you know render it out while it's playing, and pause it again and draw something else that was on the screen. Ah, uh, that sounds interesting. That's actually a good technique. Um, now that you, oh, you got a projector lately, right? Like recently. Yes, sir. So got Jerry got a projector, and it, it's like a brilliant thing to actually get if you're an artist because now you have the ability to project anything that you get on your phone, your iPad, your like or like I don't know what anything a computer. Yeah, maybe? computer. Now pretty much anything on a like a little projector that allows you to do that. Allows you to project an image onto like a wall, let's say, right? And then you can take pencils, like let's say that you have like a human person, like yay, and you like like the little curves that the person has, like choo, 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 right? And then you want to draw that on a wall or like a canvas or something. Then you project it onto it. You draw it like you sneak in here, and you draw the outlines with pencil or uh, anything that you can actually draw with. And then you turn it off and then you have a full, like, you know, template for whatever you're going to draw, especially if it's going to be a big format. That is a fantastic way to go about it. So that's also a good, cool way to watch movies though. (laughs) And like play games on like an entirely huge wall. So it's something that you can actually do. Put hyper... King has a crush on me on a paper. No. How about no? I have an old journal where I would break away from writing by drawing my room or my friends. What do you think about that? That's actually excellent. Draw your room. So I'm, what I'm taking is that you would just grab your room. Like you would have like uh, a drawing of your room. Right? And then you would start like adding things like your bed, maybe a bed frame, maybe a window, maybe some like bookcases, some stuff on top. I don't know, maybe like a cool lamp. Things like that, like that sort of drawing. Those are really, really cool. These are like, just like, like if you learn basic perspective, things like this are really fun. Especially if you were going to like redecorate a room or something like that. It's just like fun to just play around with these concepts. All right. So let's see. Jerry. Yes, sir. Would you like to say anything about Star Kaiju? What do you guys want to know in particular? Like why? 
Tell us a little bit about Star Kaiju and why you started Star Kaiju and uh, okay. what do you want with it? Please, yeah, talk loud so these people can tell your enthusiasm. <laughs> no problem. So, I started Star Kaiju uh, right when I started working in t-shirts. I did t-shirts for about six years. Um, I went into a, a printing press and I asked this guy, like, hey, man, I will work for free if you just teach me how to use all the equipment. This dude thought I was playing, so, like, the next day when I went in, he had me washing all the trays, just doing all the grunt work, but I knew it was going to come with it, so I stayed. Um, I learned how to do t-shirts, and then I was reading this book called Threads Are Not Dead, and it was talking about starting your own t-shirt brand, or, like, your own brand, and how you might need a certain design motif, like a, a niche so at the time, I had came up with these guys called Star Monsters. It was Monstars, but that name was taken, so I went to Star Kaiju. And um, I wanted to practice coloring. Like, I knew how to ink. That was, like, my trade. I wanted to be an inker growing up. So I knew how to ink. I knew how to draw. But, like, my coloring was lacking. And so by designing the stars, it allowed me to draw something very fast you know, something unique. I have a product at the end of it, but it allowed me to practice coloring. So for like the last couple of years, I've just been coloring other people's work, coloring my work, and then like trying to figure out my own process and create something that I like. Nice. So his process is very, very similar to what I do. If he finds something that he really likes to do and he focuses heavily on it until he gets good at what he's supposed to do. That is something that I practice with anatomy. With I, I started focusing a lot of that on actual foundations lately. But over here, Jerry has been focusing a lot on the digital side of things. So color theory has been like incredibly focused on him. And we just need to get him to a thousand followers so that he can stream just like me and give you guys all this knowledge as well. So please make sure to go follow Mr. Sarkaiju. We are only missing about 150 followers. If we can get 150 followers on his account, we can like honestly like start doing some really cool things. So make sure to go follow him right here and start asking your questions so that we can start answering them. Uh, just start leaving them in the comments. And meanwhile, I will follow and finish this little face and I'm gonna doodle and say funny noises. <laughs> uh, should I know anatomy if I wanna draw mech type stuff? Absolutely. Why, why, why do they need to know anatomy to draw mech kite stuff, Jerry? Well, a lot of them, especially if you're talking about Gundams, they're nothing but humans. And if you really look at the muscle parts of the Gundams, those kind of like some of them where they bulge out, they just look like the muscles. It looked like a, a trap or a quad, except it's, it's, it has a hard edge and then some divisions to make it look like a robot arm. I mean, it's the same thing, essentially. That's once you get the anatomy together, everything else becomes a little bit more easier. Exactly. So something that I like to mention to people is that if you are actually learning, barely learning how to draw like human anatomy and you want to get used to actually knowing how things connect, you should focus on thinking of all these things like big blocky body parts. And then in that case, you would be essentially drawing robots. If you're able to actually separate everything of your body into basic shapes that look like robot parts, you're essentially going to be making an, a nice body system that is going to help you pose your characters, design them, and do everything in between. So you just have to get good at designing a single body shape that gives you like all the anatomy features. And we have talked about a lot of that during this sketchbook, too. So we've been, we have been talking a lot about body systems like the beanbag is one, the hearts one that we just like focused on is another. And then all these things are meant to give you basic body placements for your hips, uh, neck, and hip bones that allow you to map out things really, really quickly to be able to do your anatomy drawings. So once you get used to using a body system, whichever one works for you, 
then you're going to be able to apply stylization to all this stuff. So foundations and then style. Foundations first and then style. That is, I, that's how it always should be. What's his name again? Oh, his name is Star Kaiju. Say hi to him again, Mr. Jerry. What's up, man? Star Kaiju in the house. Here, here. Uh, show me the star you're working on right now. All right, we're going to take this. So, right now, as we draw, this dude is, like, creating, like, these S of, like, stars right now. He's just, like, busting these out. So, go follow his page. You guys will not regret it. Like, you guys will see such a huge variety of awesome color schemes and line work that's just going to blow your mind. So, go follow Mr. Star Kaiju. All right, here you go. Keep doing magic. Yeah. All right. So let's start. What's the piece of work you are most proud of, Star Kaiju? Oh, man. So. I would probably say it's the very first star that's on my uh, my TikTok. It looks like a, it was designed off a of praying mantis. So that was the first star where the coloring process was starting to make sense to me. I was developing my own. And I remember when I sent it to one of my friends, he thought it was 3D. Nice. He was like, yo, is this 3D? And I was like, no, I colored it. And it was such a beautiful moment. So, like, that's my favorite star. I'll probably make more T-shirts of him than anything else. And I tried to use the other stars, but it's the one that just is dear to my heart. Badass. If you guys want to see the one that he was talking about, go over to Star Kaiju and his page and then you guys can actually check out his star and like the one that he's talking about you guys will see you like how many do you have right now like 50 100 on on tiktok yeah on tiktok maybe maybe 50 on my computer (laughs) yeah he has about like 50 and he has like a bunch like an unreserved i have a whole bunch of my computer just one day one day he will allow um my to make a little rod gun star kaiju It'll be a rod gun. <laughs> little like. <laughs> yeah, a little rod star. <laughs> a little rod star, but each one of his little like extremities is going to be like a pencil and a pen. We just put like all your little tats from your characters on them. Like, Archie. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm tatted up. Send me that just set. all tatted up. <laughs> uh so yeah, we want to get him up to a hundred, uh, thousand followers. So if you guys want to give him a chance to uh, show you guys what he has, about 48, 48 stars. Oh, he has about forty eight stars right now. But if you guys want to go follow him, so that we can get him to a thousand followers, that is the goal of today's stream. If we can get him to a thousand followers, uh, we will succeed in getting another education person out here helping you guys learn new things and how to like actually like do things with your artwork, like. I'll like gladly teach you guys how to draw. He'll teach you guys how to take those drawings and make stuff with them. Like all the cool things that you guys know. Make some money. <laughs> there you go. Eat. Even better. Make some <laughs> make some money. Because we got to eat. Because as artists, we are very bad at that, right? Like we are we tend to be really 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 bad at like, you know, like selling our things and learning how to make money with our things. And we end up like broke because we spend all our money on art supplies. So if we don't know how to resupply with, you know, like funds for making money with our artwork, then it's going to always be um, a negative situation for you. And so I was going to put you in the red to do art instead of making it a profitable thing that's going to give you a positive net worth in money wise, you know, at least a little bit. Yeah, money. Yeah. So, see, Mr. Jerry here is much more inclined into wanting to uh, make money than I am. <laughs> I just want to eat, man. Just enough to eat. And so, he, he makes a good point. Like, you have to get out of survival mode, right? right. Like, like, you can't be creative. Like, it's very hard to be, like, happy and creative and jolly and, like, expressive and, like, be, like, your best self. When you're constantly just trying to make ends meet. So when you're constantly just like struggling and you're like, shit, dude, like what, how am I like going to pay rent? How am I going to do this? You're not thinking at that point how to like make the next little like 
Super Mario Brothers video game or the next like Willy Wonka movie or next script for like Lord of the Rings. Nothing like that. You're not thinking like that. You're thinking, I need to eat. I need to make money. I need to make like some money. So you end up working in jobs that you don't necessarily want to do. And you end up, uh, you know, just doing things that you like could be doing differently just because you need to survive. And that's unfortunately the situation that a lot of people find themselves in. What's a top money maker he suggests to start selling? Oh man, okay. So this is gonna depend on a few things. If you're drawing, I would say print on demand. Um, from someone who actually was making all of his products himself and shipping and putting everything together. Once I got onto print on demand, I started using that. Everything got a little bit more easier for me so that I can focus on creating more. Like I didn't have to do all the other tasks. That is the very important key right there. Being able to focus on the creative side of things. That is essentially the most important thing that he just mentioned right there. Being able to delegate all the things that are not creative so that you can focus on the thing that is going to bring in the money, which is actually being a creative human being. Being able to be creative. You're the person that comes up with the ideas, the concepts, the stories, everything, imagery, all that stuff that's going to come from you. So all the things that are not supposed to be dealt with by a creative human being, you can delegate that to other people to be able to take more time for yourself to be creative. So, whew. Bro, same, I had beans tonight. <laughs> what? Can you make good money from being a concept artist? Yes. You, I think well, we don't we don't talk shit here. We don't talk bullshit here. Don't I, I don't like talking so, and like the the maybe some people do. So, so so okay. Do you think that a person that wants to go into the design world as a concept artist can make good money at this day and age? I'm a little worried about the state of the concept industry. Um, I, I wanted to be a visual development artist for years. That's what I wanted to do in school before I decided to kind of focus on my own thing. But um, it's very difficult to get into that industry, right? The competition is very high, and the guys who get there tend to stay a long time. Um, you know, so climbing that ladder is going to be really difficult as far as trying to get in as a concept artist. It, we, when you get in, is the money great? Absolutely. Is getting in and staying in. So you have to take into consideration like um, you have in the Hollywood, the Hollywood strikes are going on right now, right? The writers and actors. So they're not making movies. So, so what are the concept artists drawing? That's true. That's a, that's an interesting thing right there. Uh, so if the writers are on strike, does that mean that animators and storyboard artists and everybody else is also on strike? They're not on strike. There's just not enough jobs. So we have friends in the industry, and if their show gets canceled, you got a wave of people, you know, who are all working on that project or at that studio, all applying for the same jobs. That's interesting. That, that happened to our friend, uh, Mr. Drastel. Oh, that happened to Bill? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we do happen to have a couple people in the industry that uh, work for studios. Uh, we have a no uh, storyboard artist that works for SpongeBob, right? And, yeah. and I just won't say names because my, I don't want to like. My suggestion is this: if you start your own business, listen, you... listen very well and take notes, guys, yeah. because I'm I, I can't enforce, I can't tell you guys how important it is that you guys listen to the next couple minutes. Uh, he's going to essentially explain to you guys something that it should be core to your values. So do yourselves a favor, grab yourself a notebook right now and. Take notes of everything that he says. If you start your own business, it's going to be hard starting out. It really is. Building it from the ground up. But once you guys get it self-sustaining and sustainable, no one can ever fire you. You find yourself some dedicated fans, um, treat them well, have some nice products, and you will always be in business. Always. My favorite artist is Todd McFarlane. 
He bet it on himself with Spawn, and he built Spawn into the empire it is today, and he owns it. No one can take it away from him. No one can say, hey, we're having a writer's strike or fire. No, he makes another Spawn book, and he sells it. And then we, the fans, including myself, go buy it. So I want to tap into that, too. Um, something that I am very, very, very strongly opinionated on is the fact that you should not rely on a company to employ you. If you are going to be using your creative energy, you might as well be using it for yourself because the profit margins of uh, somebody like using you as a tool to be able to create their company logos and their company pamphlets and stuff like that. If you employed all those eight to 10 hours a day that you're going to be spending on them, on building your resume, not only your resume, you're not working for anybody. You don't need a fucking resume. Uh, if you're going to be doing your own projects and you worked eight to 10 hours on your projects every day, what do you think you could accomplish? If you were working 10 hours a day, plus whatever you are working already right now on your projects, let's say you're working 12 hours a day, you work every day, two hours a day on your projects. You put 12 hours a day into an animation. How many days do you think it's going to take before you have like a demo that you can send to somebody that you can pitch a reel to? How many drawings do you think it's going to take for you to be able to put a, together a concept book to be able to actually pitch it and be the co-creator or the creator of a TV show? A year, six months, three months, depends on how fast you like draw and how confident you are in your drawings. But that's going to be a fantastic way to approach, you know, like just not working for someone else, for God's sakes. That is never be on someone's payroll that can just cut you off and leave you dry because they will. Like I've been working in the industry for 20 years working in several production studios, been the top artist in most of them, um, gone and been art director for most of them. And then they just run out of you wanting, they wanting you that creative energy. So, or they can't afford you or you become too expensive and then they just let you go. So don't rely on a company because companies will eventually, they don't, you don't benefit from being a more experienced artist working for a company. You become a liability monetary, like financially. So the more experience you have for a company, the more at risk you are to be let go. So that just sucks. And I've done, like, I've gone through it before. So it's like, I can tell you that that's a, like how they think. That is how most corporate companies think. <sighs> Unfortunately, right? Like, well, yeah, I mean... Like, it would be awesome to want to go work for, like, I don't know, Disney or, like, Nickelodeon or whatever, like, and then just be able to know that you're going to have a nice, stable job, but. Well, yeah, and you know what? And that's good for some people. Some people who want that, you know, who want to clock into a nine to five, draw what they're going to draw, go home. Yeah, I guess there's a little bit for everybody, but, you know, like, oh, the way that I've always seen it is like, if I'm going to put creative energy into anything, uh, why waste it on a company that's not going to make the most use of it? Right? Like, do I make myself a, like, does it like, like make sense? Like my creative energy is only going to be completely fulfilled through the ways that I create, right? Through the stories that I do, because that's just going to be the most fluid way to create your own stuff, you know, it flows through you in the most natural way. So why not focus all that shit for yourself? Why not, man? Have fun, bro. If it's not fun, don't do it. Like even if you only have about 15 to 20 minutes a day, but it's dedicated time to work on your project, you're going to make a lot of progression. It adds up. Because, yeah, it adds up. I think like I started my whole like internet career like by just doing 15 minute drawings during my coffee breaks. That was how I started. And then I just started sharing that because I had those little 15 minute breaks and I guess people found it relatable and they started joining in sometimes. And that's how like the name Rod Gun got known. Yeah, I was there. Which is kind of weird. 
you know, I was working for a t-shirt company, just doing t-shirts and I just wanted to spend a little more time drawing. And I just started drawing for 15 minutes during my coffee breaks, started coffee them like coffee break doodles. And, you know, a couple of years later, I blew up, I, I, not even a couple years later, it was, it wasn't too long after that. And now I teach you guys all how to do that stuff. Five songs. What are your top five songs, Jerry? Oh, man. Top five songs. All right, first is probably going to be J. Cole's Rise and Grind. J. Cole's Rise and Grind. J. Cole's Rise and Grind Grind is probably number one. How does it go? Oh, man, I can't sing that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, no, no. Just go. I don't see nothing wrong (laughs) with a little. What? A little what? No, it's bumping grind. A little, but well, that's not it, huh? That's not it. At okay. All. <laughs> that's a whole another artist in a whole genre, bro. No, um, it will say I will say that right now. Right now, I've been enjoying the seventies. You know what I mean? Is that a band? No. So I dance. I dance. Oh, you mean like the actual seventies, like the, the time, the, the era, <laughs> the era. I'm just looking at my like. I'm, I'm, I dance, so so that's where I'm at. Yes, yeah, right so, uh, my buddy over here, uh, Mr. Star Kaiju, uh, has the uncanny ability to be an amazing Chicago stepping master. So uh, he wins championships and stuff like that. So I, I kind of want to go to one of his uh, dance competitions so that I can, like, s- see them move and then just, like, try to, like, draw that. That because be it's dope. it's really really cool to see how they move. That would be dope. Right? Like use everything you can as an experience to be able to get better. If you are not comfortable, let's say if you have to go to a bar and you don't feel very comfortable going to a bar, bring your sketchbook. Draw people around you. Like use your observation skills as, you know, something that you can actually like have fun with. And odds are you're going to make friends. Like when people start seeing you draw them, they're going to just come by and like actually want to be your friend. Like that is how I found myself to feel comfortable at bars. So I just do that. Whenever I go to a bar, I bring a pack of post-its and a pen and I just draw people and give them drawings. And then I, then those people are happy and they like look at me and they're like, oh my God, it looks just like me. Oh, look at it. Yeah, your poster drawings. Your poster drawings are amazing. I love. I love the idea too. It looks just like me. <laughs> like <Okay. laughs> <laughs> You got YouTube? Yes, I do have a YouTube. My YouTube is Rodgun the Artist. It's it's stated right over here. Um, my friend over here, Star Kaiser, you also has a YouTube, yes. don't you? Star, I don't use it. I'm just trying to get look, man. I'm not a social, I am not a social media guy. You guys do not understand. I'm over here stressing right now. I'm like, oh my god, I'm talking. I'm just not. I'm more of the behind the scenes. Hey, you need help with your story, or oh, this is how you do that. Okay, <laughs> no, Rob, do this. <laughs> so, Mr. Jerry here, over the last like 22 years. I think it's been 22 years. Mr. Jerry here has been essentially my R and D, right? Like I am a freaking hermit. I, I would not know like Eminem (laughs) from a candy and the rapper. If he didn't tell me that, that, that is how much I depend of my friend here to actually be involved in the real world. Like, I would not know any names of any artist if it wasn't for him. So, it's, um, yeah, he's quite knowledgeable in what he talks about. So, whenever he actually teaches you guys things, listen to him. But Because your teacher, your teacher, the one that you guys learned from right here, <laughs> that's who I learned from. Yeah, I just I just don't have that. The camera presence this guy has right here, man. Like he he already has the peppered mustache, you know. So now all he needs to do is get in front of the camera. Yeah, Lord Jesus, look like someone's father. Someone sent strawberries, and then someone sent hearts. 
Cool. So we gotta draw a heart. Draw a little heart. And then we'll draw a strawberry. I have to draw a strawberry star now. And then someone sent a, a gun. No, a rose. So, you know, apparently if I just wanted to make money here, that's all I would have to do. What? Anytime someone gives something, doodle it. Oh, that's how you <laughs> like do that, that seems to be the trend nowadays. Uh, you're so inspiring. Thank you. Oh, talking about you. No, this guy's inspiring. So, uh, Poppy Lago, I love how you draw and how you explain how we can get better. You really are an exceptional teacher. Aw, you are too much. Uh, high bear. Uh, what is a high bear? Like, is it a bear that's high? So we're gonna draw a bear. And we're gonna draw a bear that's like high. Like, hey. Oh yeah, this is coming out dope. Hey. That's coming out. I like that. (laughs) All right, let's see the star. Let's see the star, Jay. So part of my process. So before I get into any of the coloring, I always do like a rough color first. Just to see if I like the shapes, if I like where it's going, and all those things. So I did a little backwards. I was inking it first. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I'm pantomiming his voice. <laughs> so 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 now like those are my flats, and then you know I'm gonna add some textures, do my gradient shadows, do my shadows, and then my rim light, and it's gonna pop. <laughs> I like the way it looks so far. I'm happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Milky? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> See now, okay, okay, okay. This is something hilarious. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna point the camera towards <laughs> us for a second. Okay, so <laughs> let me flip this shit because I, I need to be able to see my face. <laughs> <laughs> How do you flip this? Yo, oh, my man, this is wild. Flip camera. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, I totally forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> this is the face of your teacher, Rodgon. Hi. How are you guys oh. doing? Hi. Hi. Mr. Energy right here. Mr. And then Mr. and then we have my friend <laughs> over here. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Star Kaiju, go follow him yeah, right yeah. now. Go follow him. Star Kaiju. I put it right here. It's right here. Oh, man. It's hilarious. So, so, so. This man does not draw in a sketchbook. No. I, only, only when I'm doing a two-week sketchbook will I, will I draw in a sketchbook. Okay. So, so, this, this is normally, like, completely contrary to what I normally say to do to learn, but, but we all go through this. We all go through this. We all go through the stage where we don't want to draw in our sketchbook. We want to draw in loose paper. He just never left it. Nope. He just never left it. So he's still drawing on like loose pieces of paper. It's crazy. I have millions of sheets of paper in a drawer, in a box, which is all my sketches in, that I scan in, and then, then I can make the sketchbook. But it's just drawing in the sketchbook. Maniac. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, but you know what? The thing is, the trick is to just be drawing. Like, whatever it is that you guys are going to use as your method, uh, the trick is to just be able to keep drawing. So if it's in a sketchbook, great. If it's not in the sketchbook, great. As long as you guys are actually drawing, you guys will be doing great. And you guys will constantly be improving. Oh, yeah, this is going to be dope. So, hi. <laughs> That's our faces. <laughs> do I like cheese? I do love cheese. Who loves the queso? The queso. Wow. Who loves the queso? Uh, your videos have really helped me improve my skills. Thank you so much. Ah, you're welcome. Just keep drawing. Uh, just keep drawing. <laughs> Just Let's go. Drawing. Thank gosh they won't quit asking. What? Oh, they're asking if I like cheese. 
Like, people just go crazy in the chat sometimes, man. Do you like cheese? I do love cheese. What kind of cheese? You know, I think my favorite cheese is Oaxaca cheese, and it's like this stringy cheese that melts into quesadillas really, really good. Okay. I like cotija cheese. Cotija cheese? What the fuck's cotija cheese? Am I saying that? It's Spanish. The, the, the white cheese they put on your roll tacos. Oh, it's, uh, it's kind of like a Parmesan, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. It's 8 a.m. in France. I just wake up and you're telling shit about cheese. <laughs> <laughs> what can we say, man? Cheese. We love cheese. Cheese, man. With cheese fists. I love you guys so much. You guys have helped me through my depression stages. Oh. Art saves lives. Art does save lives. Not alone in my room, in the back of my mind. Freestyle time. <laughs> okay, okay. So this man right here, <laughs> the first time that I get in a car with him, Right? The very first time I get in the car with him, I'm like this shy little like 18 year old fucking kid. Right? <laughs> like I've never like had friends really in my life. So it's already kind of weird that he wants to hang out with me. I'm like, uh, people want to actually hang out with me? What the hell? Uh uh, no, man. Uh uh. Get away from me. Uh, stranger danger. Stranger danger. But he managed to get me in his car and he starts asking me to freestyle. I do it on every. Oh man, I had I had a no I hard enough time like speaking to people in general, but um, after years of trying, he finally got me to do freestyle, hey. and it was about Magic the Gathering. We had like a whole intro to like whenever we want to play tournaments. Remember? Yep. Do you remember it? The intro? Yeah. No. I don't ah shit! I know we had that. <laughs> Like, it was a minority team. <laughs> so minority team was consistent of the trio of uh, our Asian friend, Steve. It was... And we call him Asian Steve. <laughs> we call him Asian Steve. <laughs> then we have Jerry. <laughs> and then we had Mr. Rodgun, the Mexican. Now. <laughs> <laughs> My and we went to play Magic the Gathering every Friday after before going to bowling. Yep. Yeah. Like that was like that was the days, man. That was like was Minora days. Tim Unite Form of <laughs> <laughs> Oh dude, no, I don't just play Magic. I was ranked like number one in uh, not I was ranked one in San Diego. Ranked like number th three in California, number 10 or like 11 in the States for Legacy. Yeah. 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 Let's go have a breakfast. My day is starting well. Woohoo! What format? Legacy format. So now it's like, what do they call it? Vintage? No, I think they still call it legacy. Oh, anyways, yeah, legacy format, like the old school stuff. Yeah, I like Reanimator. Yeah, reanimation spells. It was okay. Ah, oh, okay, my ass, dude. It was, it was I had a whole like, like forum of categories, like following my like teachings in the magic community, <laughs> copying my shit. It's not better than Belcher. <laughs> Nothing's better than Belcher. I used to beat my ex-husband at it. Oh, that's why he's your ex-husband. <laughs> As an artist, you get carpool tunnel. I think he means carpool tunnel, mm -hmm. but not carpool tunnel. You can get carpool tunnel too. <laughs> carpool tunnel. You just <laughs> you go on a carpool and then you go into a tunnel. <laughs> Do you draw with a big pen? Yes, this is just the normal, standard, cheap 
run of the mill big pen and I like using just like highlighters as well. So highlighters essentially just to accent parts of my doodles to turn them from just being little like random black and white drawings. I can actually make them be something with a nice little composition or make them stand out a little bit more. And to me, it's just a very appealing like way to approach drawing, especially with your sketchbook, because it's nice and easy. It's cheap. It doesn't bleed through other pages. You can, you know, have a lot of fun with them. And if you learn how to control them, you can do a lot of things like fades and like effects like you would with a spray can, but with your finger. Oh, hey, one subscription person present. How's it going? How to draw a back. Okay, I think that's my subscription guy, I think. All right. Let's draw a back. But I'm going to do it on the post it. Where's my post-it? You got me like a quick drawing post-it. I can't believe you got so many post-its. <laughs> I have no clue what you're talking about. All right, so let's draw the back muscles. So we discovered recently how to draw a body with two hearts. So we're going to draw one heart. We're going to draw another heart. Okay, these hearts are gonna represent, I like it like this more. They're gonna represent a couple different things. This is going to represent your shoulders, this little bump. This bump is gonna represent your butt. Your butt is gonna have underwear. So you draw your underwear on your butt and you draw it through your shape so you have your front and your back. Your legs are going to come out from your hip bone holes, not the edge of your butt, but your edge of your hip bowl. Okay. Then your calves dig into the upper part of your thigh and you end up getting this sort of shape in the back. Then you go up and this is going to be where your neck is. In between the shoulders, you're going to have three parts. You're going to get the cylinder for your neck and you're gonna get the two side muscles. So map it out like this at first. One, two, three. And you're always going to have the right amount of components for your neck. It's not just a cylinder going down and it's not just a curved line. If you do this, you're essentially eliminating a big part of your neck, which is the neck muscle that comprises of this big section of your head. So, what you're looking for normally is to divide this area in between your shoulders into three. You want the width of your neck to be the main center part, and then the next two connect to the edge of your collarbone. From the back, this is the same thing that's happening, but instead of having your neck on the front, you're going to have your neck on the other side. So now we have the back, the back is the spine. And then here we have a couple things. We're gonna have our shoulder and our shoulder wraps in the back and in the front of our collarbone. So it's gonna wrap around. Then we're gonna have our tricep that connects to the little wingy part of our, like the back of our back. We have our elbow and our forearm into our hand. Then here we have our back muscle that wraps towards the front of our body. We have the end of our rib cage, and then we have your butt muscles and whatever hips you want to get. And this is just like a nice, simple way to break it down. Not so simple, but... <laughs> But it's still the simplest way that I've ever seen how to like actually draw back muscles. So hopefully uh, I didn't lose you there at like some point. I probably did. But just realize that like uh, the back is essentially a diamond into your hip bones, right? So this is how they connect. 
That is essentially the muscles you're looking for. Uh, the back of the neck can is like two little cylinders like that. That's how the muscles work. And you have your neck and your ears. Okay. So that is how that part works. Uh, you end up getting a little split right there, and that's going to be the edge of your rib cage. Uh, let's see. So that's essentially how you would draw back. Uh, hopefully that made like any sense at all. <laughs> I want to draw because of you. Aww. Holy heck, I actually understand this. <laughs> it's crazy how you can just pop these drawings out. Aww. All right, Jerry, I'm going to ask you a question. Yes, sir. What is the hardest body part for you to draw? Probably hands. Hands. Probably because I don't do them a lot, and I like I simplified it to. So when I started doing tough teddies, the hands are so simple. When All I, right, we'll, we'll, we'll go over hands real quick. When I do a human hand, is you know, you gotta add a little bit more to what I've been doing lately. Okay. So okay. So so human hands are actually not as hard as people uh, think. Mostly because we have a reference right in front of us at all given times. We just never look at it. <laughs> I take photos. I so I'm going to show you guys a nice easy way that I've learned how to draw hands throughout the time that I've been drawing this particular sketchbook. And I'm going to show you guys the technique right now. The technique, I like to call it the lollipop approach. Let's see. Where's my Sharpie? Lollipop, lollipop. Do you have a Sharpie? Lollipop. Uh, no, gotta find my little brush. Uh, do I have anything to draw with in my hand? Okay, let's just do it this. So, we're gonna start the lollipop approach of hands by drawing a big shape for our hand. It doesn't have to be a box, it can be circular, it could be oval, it doesn't even have to be this general shape. I'm just drawing it like this right now because a general shape of our hand is like that. Right? That is the general shape of our hand. It's kind of like a curve, and it kind of tapers down. So as long as you have those two elements, you're going to be fine. Then you're going to find uh, the point in your body that connects to your hand and is going to be a consistent point. For me, I found that it was the top of my wrist, right here. And that connects to my middle knuckle in kind of a straight line. Even though it, my hand moves, it always keeps consistently in the middle. So my middle knuckle is right here. Pay attention to the placement of my actual knuckle. So if we take that into consideration with the edge of our hand, right, the edge of my hand, my knuckle is completely inside of my palm. Completely inside. It's also going to tell me the top and the bottom of my hand. So the width of my knuckle, the total width of my knuckle, is the width of my hand. So that is a perfect measurement to be able to use when you're drawing your hands. So when you're drawing your hand, you can go from the middle of your wrist to your middle knuckle is going to be like a lollipop. Okay, and then you're going to use this little measurement as your basis for your hand. To one side of that middle finger, you have one more, one more knuckle towards your thumb side. So towards my thumb side, whichever way I want my thumb side to be, I have one more knuckle. Towards my pinky side, I have two more knuckles. then the cylinders can come out from here. So now up to there, you have four independently like placed fingers. You already have the webbing for in between them as well by simply creating a curve in between them. So you get this little curve and webbing if you want it. And then about halfway up your hand, you're gonna get your thumbs, which is consisting of three parts. You have your base, 
you have your bone and you have your tip. It's kind of like a stick shift car. So you have your base, you have your bone, and you have the tip. And now you have yourself a hand. Now, that seems too simple, right? Like, obviously, if you draw it like that, that's how it's always going to look. Well, let's draw something a little bit more, more complex. Let's draw our wrist coming down this way, uh, middle of the wrist to our knuckle. Let's draw one to the uh, one to the thumb side, two to the pinky, and start la uh, I don't know molding them. Maybe you have the top and the bottom of your hand already, because your knuckles are the width of your hand. Base, stick, thumb, and now you have a nice little interesting hand. You can even have the pinky out if you want. The pinky out. So let's draw a couple more. Let's draw. The wrist coming this way. We'll draw our lollipop going to the middle. We'll draw one to the thumb side, two, not even in the same line. We're just going to draw them completely off. This is still going to be the size of the palm for our hand. So we have our middle, middle finger. We have this finger doing whatever this is supposed to be doing. This one's going to be doing something different. And this one's doing something different. And then we have our thumb comes down, base, bone, tip. And now we have like a pool player or something like that. So if you're going, this is just like the basis, right? If you're going to apply this and you're going to actually apply this to real like drawings, this is what it would look like. You would draw it really lightly. And then you would fill in with whatever type of detail you want your drawings to have. Okay, it's a matter, it's going to be more for placement and for mapping out where you're supposed to be drawing your things, more so than just drawing it just to draw that styling. It's going to be more just for your foundational work. I like your art. Ha, I like your support. <laughs> so that is how you draw hands. Uh, practice with that. Uh, have fun by just like drawing random shapes, drawing a wrist and drawing a knuckle inside and then like try to like make a hand by just drawing the rest of the hand within that shape by using these techniques. And if you can learn to do that, it's going to increase your hand game quite a bit. I wish you were my teacher when I was in high school. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm your teacher now. So you don't, you don't have to wish. What about feet? They're really difficult. Feet are not hard. Feet are actually really easy. Uh, I found that feet have like have to be way easier than hands. Essentially, feet are hands. Like, let me explain. They just got little nubs. So, if you have this same general shape for a hand or for a foot, this is what a foot is in general, in, in, in like relatively to a to a hand. So you have your ankle, which is your wrist. Right? You have your calf. In this case, you have your forearm. And you have your knee and your thigh. In this case, you have your bicep. And then when you get to the bottom, you have the flat side, like the flat side of your foot. That is essentially the palm of your hand. <laughs> and then your toes are just really little tiny fingers they're stubby instead of long fingers that have segments to them so a foot and a hand they even have like the same type of connection with the ankle right the same type of limitations when it comes down to movement
So whenever you're actually like drawing your feet, if you learn how to draw hands, you can learn how to draw feet really easy because it's the same concept. You can do like the ankle, you can do the lollipop approach to your middle finger. You have one big toe to one side, you have three to the other, and then just map it out like that. That's one way to do it. Another way to go about it is to draw a triangle divided like an ice cream cone, <laughs> like a melting ice cream cone on the bottom. And then uh, that's the round curvature that you need for shoes and for like any props, like armor or any of that stuff. So that's how you can see it as well. Or you can just see it as a cylinder going down and then expand these, like, you know how you get perspective lines, right? Whenever you're drawing like anything like a cylinder, you have little perspective lines. Well, the bottom one, just make it longer. And then you have the shape for your foot. <laughs> and then if you want the calf, just draw this little shape, but draw it bigger towards the back. And then you have the calf, or you can have shorts, or you can have like pants. <laughs> it's just a matter of using your perspective points and then making them longer so you have a bigger shape around it. And that is essentially the concept behind clothing. So there you go. Hands and feet are very similar. They have the same things, only like legs are kind of like little dumb, like like feet are kind of like little dumb hands. They don't just don't have enough flexibility. They're like stubby little parts. Like if your finger was only like this part, like. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys have heard, but my friend over Star Kaiju is kind of cool. Want to show them the star? Show them the star. Should I show them the rough colors or the flats? No, show them what you have right here. Oh. So far. All right. So for all of you that have been following along, Mr. Star Kaiju over here has uh, just added some coloring. So flat into this real quick so they can see what I, when I do my rough colors. Oh, look at the rough colors. And then he just cleans everything up as he goes. And it looks good. So go follow Mr. Star Kaiju if you guys want to go see what it's going to look like at the end. If you guys want to see the final outcome, go follow Mr. Star Kaiju. We're trying to get him to 1,000 followers. If one of you guys can let me know what number we're at right now, we should be at least close to 900. So if someone can give me a shout out as to how many followers he has, let me know. Star Kaiju. We got head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Star Kaiju. Star Kaiju. Star Kaiju. Star Kaiju. Could you please draw it from the front? The foot. Yes, I can totally draw a foot from the front. So if you're drawing your cylinder and you want to draw a foot from the front, you have the option of drawing it completely coming towards you, but that's boring. So I would draw it coming back down a little bit. And then that way you give yourself a little bit of perspective. You make it look like a character is actually standing in space. Uh, if so, if you have a character, right, and you don't want them to look flat like this, you want to have a little bit more depth, draw your feet coming down because that's essentially providing you a physical ground for them to actually stand on. So by doing this, whatever perspective you're sending these to, that is where the horizon line is, and you can also start coming up with cool things around them by just simply learning where your feet come from. You can start drawing trees and background elements, like no anything you really want from buildings to, right? Anything is really fair game the moment that you learn how to ground your character. And it can be just a little sushi 
with their feet pointing in a different direction. And then those have given you perspective lines. So now you can use that to create things like your comic book characters and your stories and your props and how they're standing, maybe drinking a beer, you know, at a bar, draw some people around them. So that is how you progress to adding backgrounds and figuring out the perspective for your characters. You need to ground your characters first. And by grounding your characters, by changing the perspective of how the feet go, you're able to have a lot more fun by putting them in different situations. It doesn't always have to be a flat line. You make the characters like little captains in them. <laughs> I tried finding your friend. Can you write his name for me? Yes. I think there's two Is it? Check your thing. No, there's people finding him. Yeah, there's people finding him. So start Kaiju. So what what number are we at? How many we got? We're at 238, 239. 839. 839. So we are at 839. We need to get to 1,000 so he can stream. So we need to get a thousand followers. If each one of you guys right now goes and follows him, we get to that number immediately. And then we can, uh, you know, like say that we have succeeded and I'll even draw like some cool stuff with uh, the three by three method that you guys love so much. Maybe I have to do a giveaway, a t-shirt giveaway. Ooh. So if we get to a thousand, we'll do a t-shirt giveaway and I'll give away also a little post-it, a uh, little piece of art as well. Uh, so if you guys get to a thousand, let's say if you guys get to a thousand within the next 20 minutes, we will do a giveaway of a t-shirt. We'll do a sticker and then we'll do a posted doodle. So we'll have three people win, uh, something, but we need to get to a thousand followers for Mr. Star Kaiju within the next 20 minutes. Yes. Star Kaiju. Yeah, just uh, someone put it in the links, please. It's the one with the stars. So I will. Man, I got to practice this technique a little bit more. Like, it's actually really kind of cool. I really like it. Mm -hmm. right. So, what is your favorite software to work in, Jerry? 100% Clip Studios. I think it's the best software for, for illustrators. So, for all of you that guys are wondering what we're talking about right now, because it might be a foreign language to people that don't use computers to draw. Uh, <laughs> whenever we are actually taking our drawing into the computer, uh, we have a preference as to what programs we use. We're going to talk a little bit about why each one of us prefers a certain program. And maybe that helps you guys decide what you guys can actually like achieve with it. If you guys want to see examples of what, you know, Star Kaiju can do, go look at his work. If, if you guys want to see examples of what I've done with digital work, you guys can probably go. I don't know. I don't even know if I have finished work. What's it anyway? I know I want to. I know I want so you guys can go rodgon.com. If you guys go to rodgon.com, you guys can check out my some of my finished digital artwork. Both of us have very similar processes. And Jerry is just a master at color. Like, so pff, uh, hands off to him. Like, like, he has always been the master of inking and the master of colors in our, in our dynamic. Color. Yeah. I think Steve got Yeah, Steve was the color guy, but Steve gave up. <laughs> Steve gave up. He passed on the torch and he was like, you guys continue on. I'm just going to I'm just going to go look at things from the sidelines. So yeah, like don't give up. <laughs> just don't give up. Like he was such a great designer and he just uh, he gave up because uh, it was easier to do something else.
Um, it's unfortunate, but that happens to a lot of people when, you know, they don't get to do the things that they want to do with their career. Uh, Something you don't want the pressure. Yeah, so uh, a lot of people don't really enjoy artwork as a job. They enjoy it as a hobby. They enjoy it as something to pass the time, something to do, like, you know, something with on the side. If you're going to be a person that does it for a living, yeah, it's it's a little different. It's just like uh, you need to consume your life with it, right? Like it has to be your life. It has to be your passion. It has to be like your drive. And if you don't have that, man, it's so hard to like actually like succeed. At least I think so. I think that it's actually incredibly hard to succeed if you don't have that drive. Oh, yeah. While you sleep, somebody drunk. Plus, the whole world is... The whole world is going to tell you why you should not be an artist. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, every single aspect of your world and life from other adults and shit will always tell you why you should not be an artist. And um, if you can't justify to yourself why through all that negativity that's going to come your way, because it just does. Like, I think we've all gone through that shit. Like, how many people have told you to do something different? All the time. You, I've, you and I wrote in school. You sure? Mm-hmm. So just don't be discouraged, okay? Like, like, I always like to tell people, no one in this world will ever be as excited about what you want to do other than you no one will really understand how important a project is or how important a concept is or how important an assignment is when it's your assignment right you're not going to be able to get anyone to be as excited about it so you should always be your number one fan you should never put yourself down you should always have your own back you should always make sure that you are looking out for you first because no one else is going to do it as much as you wish that it was the case. Right? Like, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm just the only person thinking this, but mm. like when you have a certain passion for something, and in this case, it's art for me and Jerry, like it's going to be really hard to explain that passion to somebody that does not understand how important it is to draw or create something. Right. Or in my case, it's like teaching. I, I just found teaching to be an incredibly joyous thing to do. So I have found that to be part of my life now, and I just don't know how to get rid of it. So anybody that comes into your life, if they don't like bring a little bit of fulfillment to that, and I think that's why so many artists are like hermits. You know, eventually you figure that out. You figure out that you need that energy to be able to uh, create, and people suck it out of you. Oh, yeah, that's just life. So, number one, surround yourself with people that trust and want to have you around them. Two, be around people that are going to encourage your creative um, endeavors instead of putting you down. And I can't, like, enforce that. I can't say this enough. You need support because your ego needs to be boosted once in a while. Uh, but you need to do it from respected sources. Like your mom is not going to be the best source of inspiration telling you that you are awesome because she's going to always think you're awesome, even if you suck. <laughs> so like take whatever uh, encouragement you take from family members with a grain of salt, because it's not always going to be accurate. And you should know this and you should like acknowledge this period, like as an artist, uh, people will tell you your stuff is great, even though it's not. So you have to be your own self-critic. You have to be your own, like, you know, critical choice here and actually have people around you that you trust enough to give you advice and to tell you if you fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? These are the people that's going to tell you the truth. Yeah, you want people to tell you the actual truth. Like, I mean, sometimes the truth sucks and the truth hurts, you know? And we don't like to hear that we have to, like, improve in certain things and we don't like criticism. And a lot of us think that we can actually go through an art career without criticism. <laughs> good, luck. 
Good luck. <laughs> If you can find a job in art that does not criticize the living hell out of you, please let me know because uh, I'd love to, like, apply it to that. <laughs> you have to draw up a storm. <laughs> so if you guys are going to uh, be going into art, develop tough skin because you're going to need it. Uh, it's going to be a tough ride. Even, if, even for the best designers... It's going to be a tough ride because you're working with clients and clients don't know shit. <laughs> Can't tell that. Clients don't know anything, Can't tell that. but you still need to be their mind reader and like you need to like create things that they like. Like, so you're essentially like a robot that just tries to get into their brain and then just like try to like solve the problem of how do I make my creative person make the logo that I want not look like shit. <laughs> I hate graphic design so much. <laughs> so much. I hate it. I hate it so much. It's so boring. And I know I shouldn't be bashing other like forms of art, but it's just like... Uh. It's not the funnest part of the job. Sometimes doing a logo could be fun. Doing a logo for yourself is cool. Doing a logo for someone else is like the most tedious thing in the world because... Like, they never are happy. That, that is generally the case. Like, when the client, like, when you feel like the client is just settling because <laughs> they're tired of revisions and shit, you're like, I don't enjoy this anymore. Like, sometimes there is I no part it. of the design process of a logo that I enjoy. Sometimes I'll be settling with them, like, yeah, this is what you're getting. Artists don't give up, dude. When you're done, you're going to look back and so glad. You know, uh, how did someone put it? Uh, success. Success comes to those that are okay with the monotonous task required to create uh, wonderful things. Yeah, I think that was it. So if you are happy and joyous doing all the monotonous crap that is required to be able to get to this level of drawing to a professional level of drawing in general well then you're gonna have what it takes to be an artist and a designer because you're not gonna be tired of actually learning and improving if you see exercises like the ones that i do like you know your circle exercises your anatomy exercises your practice from reference exercises your life drawing all that stuff if you find that boring this is not the career for you because it's just you're gonna be bored out of your goddamn mind like all this stuff is literally you can't always just be doing amazing like magnificent posters and stuff well, I guess if, unless you work for yourself, I guess then you can. <laughs> but I'm guessing if you don't have the ability to draw from like, for, if you don't idea. have like a basic acknowledgement of perspective and anatomy, like yeah. you're not going to be drawing for yourself for very long. Probably not at all. But I get, yeah, you still need to be able to. Uh, unless you're like uh, the people like that make like those awesome web comics that are super simple, <laughs> that are just yeah. like text based pretty much, right? Like, so there's, a, there's a, even a niche for that. So if, like, don't even, you don't even have to listen to me. <laughs> if you find the way, do it. This is the way. Screw Rod. You make your money. You make your bread. Is that, that's how kids say it nowadays, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how kids say it nowadays. Go get your bread, son. No cap. No cap. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's like. It's like Yeah, you told me it's like no shit or something like that. It's like like not no Don't lie. Like if I say don't lie. Or Tonight like, on uh <laughs> millennial artist does not understand the next generation. Like, like you capping like you lying. Like, you, Why is it cap? I don't know. That's what And is it cap like captain? No, like K A P. Like like a cap like a hat. Capping. Like a hat? I don't know. See, at least it made sense. It was like no cap, like like nah, c police commander, or like you know, like like nah, dude, no nah, no commander. That's fine, no cap. But a hat? You asking me things I don't know. 
<laughs> yeah, I just don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I just, that's all I know. Like, you capping. You capping. See, see, in, me, in my head, I'd be like, I'm capping you, like, pat, pat. Putting a cap in your ass. That's a different type of cap. <laughs> that's I bust a cap in you. See, <laughs> I bust a cap, no cap. Yeah, wait, that's that like works. wait, no. It's like so no cap? <laughs> no, I'm gonna cap your ass. No cap. That sounds like a good comic strip. <laughs> so How can I draw a character that looks up? Um okay, so if you have no reference point as to how to draw a character looking up. The easiest way to do that is by learning how to rotate a sphere up. So by doing this with an exercise, just a simple ball, draw a circle inside the ball to give yourself a guideline and draw a simple happy face. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then you're going to take that happy face and you're going to move that happy face up that center line. So instead of drawing it right here, I'm going to draw it right here. Once you get good at drawing this basic shape like this, start adding things like the chin and the ears. The chin, maybe some ears. Mm. As you guys can see, you need to draw through your shape to find your other ear if you want to make this work perfectly. Because then you just go from the bottom of your ear and you connect the line to your chin and onto the other the other ear and then you have your downward looking or upward looking faces a little bit easier mm, I think the purple looks good that looks good so if you want to make them look oh that looks nice that looks nice if you guys want to see what I'm looking at right now go over to starkaiju.com oh, it's starkaiju I'm about to make the video right now so if you want to make them look down you rotate the features down on the face you can get your ears from both sides and then connect those to your chin. And then when you start adding more detail and you learn more stuff about anatomy, like your cheekbones and your mouth canals and your nose stuff and your nose bridge and your temples and stuff like that. Once you learn all that stuff, you can start adding that stuff to this same basic premise. But if you learn with a basic shape at first, by just mapping little things like your chin and your mouth, and you learn how to move that around, whenever you go in and add more detail, you're gonna know the placement of things. You're just gonna have to know how to render those details out properly. Save this. Can you draw what? Can you draw like five different mouths and nose combinations? I'm stuck drawing this. <laughs> sure, dude. Okay, so the mouth is a rubber band. Essentially, you can draw the mouth as a rubber band. Draw the mouth in any way, shape you want. As long as it's a point that connects one point and to another point. We'll just map out two points, right? We're going to darken the top line and overlap it a little bit. Top line, make it darker and overlap it a little bit. Top line, make it dark it and overlap it a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to add negative space. And all of a sudden, we have really interesting mouths. Yeah, Halloween's coming up. I need to do a pumpkin one. I know. Did I tell you that I'm going to go on an Inktober trip? Inktober, uh, Jake Parker and... He called you? No, I just signed up for it. Um, it's uh, during, like, October 16th to the 23rd. You did tell me that. Uh, and then he said noses, so he wanted a combo of noses, so we'll try do it now. So if you guys wanted your nose, if you wanted to draw your nose and your mouth in one shape, it's going to be a teardrop. Did I upload that? 
So if you draw a teardrop, you have this area for your nose canal, your nose bridge, your nose bridge into whatever width nose you want. Okay, so that's your nose bridge into your nose canal. And then your mouth can go from this edge to this edge as a rubber band. Step three, you need your sketch. Step four, add a little color. Step five, turn, turn on the lights. Darken the top line and overlap it a little bit. Darken the top line and overlap it a little bit. Darken the top line and overlap it a little bit. Darken the top line and overlap it a little bit. Add negative space. And you have yourself interesting mouths with different noses. How do you draw consistent characters? Draw them over and over until you can't undraw them. Like literally break them down into like a scientific method. Like be like, okay, my character's eyes are in the middle. Okay. And then about a fourth of the way up, you have the eyebrow. And then you have about halfway down, you have your nose and it's a triangle. And then you have another triangle for your jaw. And then your ear is about halfway. Like start thinking about things like that so that your brain gets used to it. And then you can apply the same mathematical approach to the front view. And then that's the best way that you can do it. Like that is just the most consistent way that you can go about it. Like there's no secret trick. You just have to get used to visualizing it better. What did you use to color blue color? It's a highlighter. What did you use to, uh, Skull Minion? Skull Minion? Wow. Do you think this person knows about the Minions? I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't think anybody would know about the Minions here. Uh, my Minions were little beanbag characters that had, like, a little eye. I think he should do them again. Just change them. And they were, like, themed to be, like, different things. Uh, I made a hundred of them. <laughs> so maybe I'll hold a contest to like name them differently. Yeah. Because I, I actually did like them and they were really fun to draw. Dude, imagine Invite Slim One to go live. Nah. Uh, do you ever do sketchbook tours? Yes, I will do one uh, for this one. I will probably do one for this one once I finish it. And I get it scanned. Once I do that, then I'll do it. Uh, how do you draw eyes? Eyes and mouths are very similar. Uh, you just draw, again, two dots, connect them with curvy lines, darken the top one and overlap it, and then draw your eye. Your mouth is the same way. Connect two dots, curvy line, curvy line, darken line, negative space. So it's the same thing for both of them. And that's not just like a trick. You can do this as like a three quarter view as well. Two dots, curvy line, curvy line, draw your lips inside, you have a mouth. Dot, dot, curvy line, curvy line, darken one, you have an eye. It's the same basic premise for both body parts. So once you learn how to draw one, the other one is gonna come really, really easy. So when you draw your mouths, draw your lips inside. So draw your curvy lines and then draw your lips inside. Don't draw them outside. Don't do the mouth and then draw your lips outside. Don't do that. Draw your mouth shape. Draw your lips inside, depending on how much you want to pucker them. And then that's pretty much it. Mouths are actually really easy. We just we just overthink everything, and, and we don't get taught right. Two dots, two dots, any two dots, two dots, connect them with a curvy line, any curvy line, and then overlap the top line a little bit. Just overlap it. 
And then you have perfect lips with mouths with lips or no lips, just mouths. Ah. How long have I been live for? I don't know, probably like an hour. Like we finished the page and tomorrow we do the final page of our sketchbook, so. Great job, you've been gone for live for 90 minutes. See, yeah, TikTok, thank you for answering my question. Anyways, I'm going to let you guys go because I am done drawing for today. We are one page away from finishing this sketchbook. One single page away. And then we have a sketchbook tour and then uh, we uh, scan it in and then we put it for sale. Yeah, for all of you guys to have. So at the end of my streams, I have been accustomed to sending you guys off with a nice little message. So bear with it. It's coming. It's coming. Your care, caring, caring uh, neighborhood artist here. So, everybody, if it's really late for you and you're staying up with me on this Saturday night, thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you so much. And I am out here. I'm going to be the one that shows you guys a little bit of love. Thank you guys so much for being my sketch buddies tonight. Uh, I really do appreciate your guys' you know, time. Uh, I do appreciate your guys' attention and support. So a little bit of love goes from me to you. I want you guys also to rest well tonight. I want you guys to have a wonderful night. And if it's morning for you guys, I want you guys to go outside and enjoy a little bit of the sunlight. Okay. Then I want you guys to listen to something happy before you go to bed. So put on your favorite like happy podcast or you guys put on your favorite song, some happy memory that you have or something that's going to make you smile, laugh a little bit. And I want you guys to realize that you're artists. So without actually going out and doing this, you're not going to get better. So you got to go out and draw as much as you can so that you can improve and create all those things you guys have in your mind and in your dreams. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Go follow my friend Star Kaiju, please. If you guys want to help me get him to a thousand followers, uh, we want to get him streaming as well so he can teach you guys about colors and digital designs and product placements and all that stuff as well. He is a fucking genius at that shit. Uh, so do that. Take care. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Say bye, Jerry. Peace out, you guys. Enjoy your night. Peace.